To build the Android open source project we will need to download Ubuntu 20 on our Mac or Windows. For that, we will Google for Ubuntu 20 and click on the first link. This will take us to the latest 20 LTS release. In our case it is 2004. We will then select the desktop image to download the 2.6 GB ISO file. We will also need to download a virtual machine player to run our ISO. Those with a Mac, Google for VMware Fusion. For those with Windows, just Google VMware Workstation Player. For both, we will select the download links from VMware.com. That will take us to the player download page. VMware Fusion 12 is already optimized for Mac OS 11 Big Sur and also works for 10.15 Catalina release. If you are planning to use it for personal use, you can download the Fusion 12 player. For non-personal use, download the Fusion 12 Pro. You have a 30 days free trial with the Pro version. For Windows users, you only have a single download, Workstation 16 player for Windows. After installing and starting the player, we will use it to install and run Ubuntu 20. We will select to install from disk or image and click continue. And either drag our ISO or we can click on use another disk or disk image. Select the ISO and click open. Continue to the next step. We can use the easy install method and just type in a password. Let's continue to the next step. The default settings is not enough to build Android open source project on our machine. We will need to modify most of these settings by clicking Customize Settings. We can rename the virtual machine to whatever name we want it to be. We can also place the virtual machine in an external USB drive. Otherwise, we will click on Save. Before we boot for the first time, we will need to change the virtual machine settings. We will first click on processors and memory. A couple of processor cores can be a bit slow to build the Android operating system but it is probably possible. I will assign all of my 8 cores to the build. With regards to memory, Google recommends to provide at least 16 GB of memory. But we will build with only 12. We will also click on advanced options and enable virtualization. This is to allow to boot the Android virtual machine inside the Ubuntu OS. Now we can click on show all so we can go back to the settings screen. We also need to increase the hard disk space for the virtual machine. Downloading the open source will take about 150 GB of space and buildining the image will take another 150. So in total, we will need at least 350 GB of space to fully build the OS. It is recommended to always put as much as possible even if your internal hard drive does not have that much space. In the case where the OS runs out of room, you can always shut it down and move it to an external hard drive. Let's close the settings screen and press the play button to start the easy install. I will speed things up, but the process took me 7 minutes on one of the latest Macs. We should now log in with the new user. I will skip connecting my Google account but you might find it useful to do. I will skip settings up live patch, but again you might find it useful to do. It seems that there is an update to the OS. As long as we stay with version 20, it should be good to start the update. Restarting to finish the update. Let's open the terminal app by clicking on the left bottom 9 dot icon. Search for the terminal app and click on the icon. Next, we will need to install some packages. Open the course material to copy and paste the apt-get-install command into the terminal. For Mac users, 
you can use the Control shift v keys combination to paste from your Mac. In order to download the Android OS source code, we will need to download the repo launcher. Open the course material and paste the repo launcher install commands to download repo and change its mode to an executable binary. Now we can create an AOSP folder for our source code download location. From the course material, copy paste the repo init command to initialize a checkout of the master branch of the Android source code. This information is also available in source.android.com in the setup tab under download. You can see in the instructions on how to download a specific branch using the dash B flag. Also it is possible to use the partial clone flag to only download what you need for the build. After initializing the repo against the master branch you will see a git error that you can choose to ignore. If you wish to git config your email and name, go ahead and do that now by running the git config commands with your email and name. We can now download the actual source code by running repo sync along with the number of cores appended to the dash J flag. Again, I will speed things up, but this process took me almost an hour to complete on a strong Wi-Fi at home. The resulting virtual machine is about 190 gigabyte. This is obviously without building the source. Running D with depth of 1 shows that the AOSP folder takes about 115 gigabyte. Let us go back to the AOSP folder and run ls to see the directory structure. For now, let's ignore most of these folders, but only focus on a single directory called device. The device folder is intended to host all the open source Android customization code. It is where we would add our own customized system service. In the Google folder, we can find the open source code for the supported Google phones for this checkout branch. The code name of these phones are named after a fish. For example, Redfin is code name for the Pixel 5. For testing any platform code, we should start coding on a virtual device, and once the service has worked on the virtual device, we can add it to our target device service list. The Cuttlefish image is a configurable virtual Android device that includes all the framework code and any custom platform code like the one we are planning to add in this course. The Cuttlefish image is a replacement for the Android emulator for OSP developers. Let's go back to the OSP folder. Before we can start the Cuttlefish image build, we will need to load the lunch script along with other useful development tools so we can build Android. This is done by sourcing the build slash env setup shell script. Now we can see the full list of available commands by running hmm. Let's go over few important commands. The launch command will be used for selecting a specific image to build. We will use it shortly to select the Cuttlefish x86 user debug image. Android is made out of modules, which must have a unique name. The gomod command can show us the location of the settings app by just typing gomod settings. The croot command changes the directory to the AOSP directory. The m command builds the current directory. We will soon use the m command to build the full Android image by running this command from the AOSP folder. To select a device to build, we will need to run the launch command. The script has parsed the device directory and found the following build combinations. For Cuttlefish, we have seven build combinations. Notice that it is also possible to build the Pixel 5 codename Redfin using this menu. But that requires the device binaries to be in the vendor folder. We can see that combinations have user, user debug or ENG endings. User build is for production build. It does not have root access. And the Android Developer Bridge or HeyDB is disabled by default. User Debug adds debugging features. HeyDB is enabled by default. The HeyDB shell command will open the running Android Linux shell screen. If we build with User Debug, we can change to root by running SU. ENG build is similar to User Debug build, 
but hey db comes up in root mode without needing to ask you. We will select the Cuttlefish Image x86 build combination by typing 17. This number can change as more devices are added or removed, so it's always good to validate our selection. We are ready to start the build process by running the m-j command. The build has finished successfully. It took 6 hours and 47 minutes on a strong MacBook Pro. We can see that a super image has been written inside the VSOC folder and is ready to boot. The name of the folder is set by the board config mk file inside the cuttlefish folder using the target board platform variable. The super image contains the system, vendor and product images. The super image is 6 and a half gigabyte in size and it is read only. The writable user data image is the partition the system will use to unpack apps and save databases. It is also 6 and a half gigabyte, but it is currently empty until the system boots for the first time. Let's run the du command again to see what is the size of the AOSP folder. We can see that the size has grown to 200 gigabyte. Let's go back to the AOSP folder and run the print config command to double check we are booting Cuttlefish. To boot Cuttlefish, we will need to run the HeyCloud command. If this is our first time, we will need to set up HeyCloud by running HeyCloud setup host. We will agree to install all the needed packages. After the setup process has finished, we must restart our Ubuntu. Now that we are logged back in, we need to reload the environment variables. Instead of calling lunch 17, we can just call lunch with the build combination string. Finally, we can run the following HeyCloud create command to run a local instance running a local image. HeyCloud can also run images on the cloud, but we will ignore that feature for now. Cuttlefish has booted successfully, and the VNC viewer has logged into the device. We can now go to the settings app. And in About Phone we can scroll down to the build number and click 7 times in order to enable the developer options. Now the developer options have appeared in the system menu under the advanced section. The menu is a bit jumpy. We should try to enable strict mode to see if an app runs long operations on the main thread. We should also enable the option to show backgrounds app that are not responding. And let's enable show taps to see a visual feedback for our taps. The last thing we want to do is to access the Linux shell on our Cuttlefish device. HeyDB Devices shows us the connected devices. We can run HeyDB shell to access the Linux shell. LS will show us the directory structure. Running ID shows that we are running as a shell user ID. That ID belongs to many groups such as the log group and the SD card or W group for SD card access. We can also run SU to gain root access. We have now completed building and running the Android Cuttlefish image.